Carroll bringing it forward. Thompson's making the run. Carroll hangs on to it though. Still Davy Carroll. Could go all the way here. Oh, what a goal! Hello, I'm Phil Catchpole and welcome to another episode of Ringing the Blues, the podcast dedicated to the mighty Wickham Wanderers. On this week's show, we've got all the action and reaction from the Derby County and Millwall games, plus the chaps at Red Tinted Glasses, the podcast of Aberdeen, have given us a lovely interview with Jack Grimmer. Check that out later on in the show. But first, let's head to Mexico City to catch up with Uri and get the results from the Championship. the blues from Mexico City. My name is Uri and here are the results for the Championship League. Coventry City 2, Brentford 0, Bristol City 0, Bansley 1, Cardiff City 4, Preston North End 0, Huddersfield Town 4, Swansea City 1, Millwall 0, Wickham Wanderers 0. Norwich City 1, Rotherham United 0, Nottingham Forest 1, Blackburn Rovers 0, Queen's Park Rangers 2, Bournemouth 1, Reading 0, Middlesbrough 2, Sheffield Wednesday 0, Birmingham City 1, Stoke City 3, Luton Town 0. So, Cher Boy Spanish this week, a clean sheet away from home. So, let's go by parts. Clean, limpio, sheet, planilla, hoja. But in Spanish, we don't say clean sheet, planilla limpia. We say hoja en blanco, like a white sheet. Away from home, lejos de casa, or fuera de casa. So it goes like this, a clean sheet away from home, una hoja en blanco, fuera de casa. Well, we are very glad about this nil-nil. Who shouldn't be glad about this? Oh, before ending this transmission, I would say hello to Lisa Coming at Lisa the Cat, who is a fan of my ringing the blues greetings at the beginning of every transmission. Back to Ingerland with my amigo Phil Catchball. Until next week. Fresh off the back of their first win of 2021, Wickham had a busy week hosting Derby on Tuesday night at Adams Park and then a trip to Millwall on Saturday. Here's how the week unfolded. We've had a, a bit of tough luck lately. You know, we should have had this, we should have had that. We deserved it today and I'm so proud of the boys. They really stepped on Huddersfield in the second half and I, I wanted to step on them from the start and we gave them a little bit too much respect early on. But to step on, to be brave, I thought the boys were magnificent. Like I say, we keep playing like that. Who knows? Derby corner then from the right-hand side. And it goes from Wackholm. And it's in. Off it, Piazza. It's an own goal. He's tried to head it away from danger, but diverted it past Allsop into his own net. Waghorn takes the plaudits. It was a dangerous whipped corner into the front post. And unfortunate for Uchik Piazza, who nodded into his own net. 15 minutes gone. Wickham nil, Derby won. Grimmer slips it through to Knight inside the area. Knight goes down, and it's a Wickham penalty. Josh Knight fouled, bundled in the back, and he went down under the challenge. It's a Wickham Wanderers spot kick. Piazza looking for his third Wickham goal of the season. Up he steps, right foot it and scores straight down the middle. Uchik Piazza brings Wickham back on terms, having scored an own goal in the first half. He levels the score from the spot early in the second half. It's Wickham 1, Derby 1. This will probably be the last attacking move of the game. Derby will commit lots of men forward here. Wickham, understandably, everybody back here. And Waghorn, a real menace from these situations. Goes for goal, hits the post and back out. And Wisdom has scored what will surely be a winner for Derby County. The ball ricocheted off the post. And Andre Wisdom hammered it home, level with the penalty spot. All stopped with no chance. And Derby County smash and grab. Wickham 1, Derby 2. 
Gareth, um, well, a ram raid from Derby at the end there. That, that must feel like a kick in the teeth after what was an excellent performance. Yeah, I'm going to look past the result and say the performance is good enough to stay in the championship. To we we have got long term plans here to be in this championship. This club. Um, it's, it's awesome to know that we can perform like that against a, a, top, a team that's fourth in the table for form at the moment. And they've probably gone top three now for form after that. But um, I think people know what happened tonight. Uh, I'm not going to go any more into that, but um, that was good enough for me. There was a real crucial point in that first half. Wickham had the ball in the back of the net. It was given offside two minutes later, an own goal. He won nil down. And, you know, it's been a cruel division up to now, hasn't it? Wickham Wanderers don't seem to be getting the rub of the green on decisions. Um, I don't know how it's going to even itself up now with the amount of time that's left, but um, we are not going to talk about that because it looks like sour grapes. It, it, it feels like sour grapes, and all I want to concentrate on is the super battling, energetic performance from my boys. They were brilliant today, and I will not take anything away from them. And anyone who hears this and thinks that you didn't see the game then and think, oh, he's just being super positive, have a look at the game, please. Have a look at the highlights, and you'll see what I'm talking about, because that was good enough for me, and it'd be good enough to stay in the championship if we keep playing like that. Great character, though, for the second game in a row, uh, chasing a deficit. Wickham came out really snarling in the start of that second half and were deservedly level after a few minutes. Um, Uchik Piazza, instrumental. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a brilliant signing. You know, I think um, if Uchi and Tafford had been fit for the whole season, you know, we, we only got him in January. Uh, we actually signed him in, in August and, and got him fit in January, you know, and, and that's just, you know, circumstances and, and a bit of luck, you know, it goes against you sometimes. I tell you what, we got a hell of a squad here and I'm really, really proud of them. And no matter what, we are going to come out swinging every single game. Um, even though things seem to be going really against us, we will not be put down. We will not be staying down and staying silent. We will be coming out, chests out, performing like that. Whatever happens, we'll be swinging. And I'm really, really proud of the boys tonight. This system you've got now with, with uh, Knight in midfield, it's allowing Horgan and McCleary to really start to light up the place, along with Mometi as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and they've been fantastic for me. Um, it's taken a while to get this, you know, to get everyone fit, you know, and uh, and and get this system in place. But um, you know, looking at uh, Darrell Horgan and, and what he can do offensively, and, and Gareth McCleary, Uchik Pizzi, you know, we've got match winners in the team, and now Taffers Ollie Anthony Stewart, great partnership with the back, Josh Knight screening in front, just fantastic, you know. And uh, like I say, can't can't be prouder tonight, and uh, hopefully we can uh, we can take this into Saturday out Mill. It's been some fantastic football this uh, this evening as well. How much did that COVID break? Set Wickham back because it, they seem flat for a few games, but the buzz and the, and the zip is back. Yeah, it's going to do. You know, Phil, you break a football and it, and it does affect you. But it's uh, again, COVID is one of the minor things we've had to deal with this season. There's a lot more things we've had to deal with that I can't control. Again, I'm not going to go into detail because people know what I'm talking about. Um, I just feel for the boys because some of them think it's just not fair. Um, I can't say anything on that. I'm just going to keep myself. Focused on Millwall on Saturday and make sure we go into that swinging again. So, insert commentary highlights here, it says on my notes. Well, Millwall nil, Wickham nil. Uh, a terrible pitch and not a great game, to be honest. Although, great to see David Stockdale keep a clean sheet for his first appearance for Wickham Wanderers in the Championship. Uh, first appearance for him at this level for quite some time as well. So, good news for him and Wickham get a well-earned, hard-earned point. Uh, Gareth, uh, not one that, that will live long in the memory, but uh, a useful point? Yeah, of course. You know, away from home. Any point's a good point, especially in the championship. Um, and, uh, you know, they they paid us a massive compliment, by the way. They set up, you know, they got five and five at the back, which was very difficult to break down, you know, very difficult. I thought um, I thought uh, we tried and we tried and we got in a couple of times and there was a couple of shots. I think Dow Logan had a great shot on target. Um, Uchi's had one of his spectacular ones. Fred's got in the box a couple of times. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a foul on him on one. Um, but we, we, you know, we're pleased with the clean sheet. David Stockdale coming in, we'll be very pleased with the clean sheet. Um, the back four defended really well, really well against some quality players. Jed Wallace and Matt Smith, who they had to take off. You know, this is a this is a championship outfit, and uh, and getting a point away from home is great. I just said to the boys, you get points away from home, and you win your home games. That's a recipe for staying up. So we've got a home game Tuesday. Let's go and win it. 
Uh, David Stockdale had that emergency loan at Stevenage. Um, perfect timing, really, with, with the injury coming to Ryan Allsop. That would have been the, the perfect preparation for him today. Yeah, definitely. You know, Stephen has been great. Alex Ravel, obviously, ex chair boy. Um, we had a chat a couple of weeks ago, and I thought it was ideal for, for David Stockdale to go out on loan. Lee Harrison agreed. Uh, and I think uh, we've seen the sharp David Stockdale, you know, the one that the one that came in um, to the championship, you know, three, four, five years ago for, for Brighton and and, uh, and did fantastic. So he's he's uh, going to be competition for Ryan now which is brilliant um, and he started off with a clean sheet again which is great we're not on many this season but um, that's a positive for me in, in a big way um, it's a few tired legs out there at the end we'll have to see what we're going to do Tuesday but again I think the last three games we've been super competitive you know that, that should have really been seven points out of three games which should have been ideal but um, obviously we, uh, we know what happened Tuesday so um, looking forward to next Tuesday now uh, and if we can get a get a win against Reading while wow, that, that makes this a phenomenal point away from home uh, 20 points now on the board um, 23 is the, the lowest mm. record in the championship set by Rotherham are you looking forward to getting past that soon? <laughs> cheers for reminding me so I didn't even know about that so um, yeah I mean as you say a club like Rotherham who are fighting and scrapping and they've been up and down a couple of times and uh, and you know, look where they are now competing. They know what it's all about. This is our first jump in the championship. I think we're doing, you know, as much as we can. Um, and I'm really proud of the boys, as always. You know, it's uh, nobody can say we weren't fighting today. We were scrapping all over the pitch and uh, valuable minutes again for, for Anish Mamete. Um, you know, Uchi and, and Daryl gave me everything and, and sort of ran out of steam towards the end. Good minutes for Addy again coming on. So, um, yeah, real good team selection problems for me. Um, got a bit of a settled side at the moment, which is really good for me. I'm really pleased and uh, looking forward now to seeing what we can do on uh, on Tuesday. Uh, the pitch wasn't great, was it? And I know it's the same for both sets of both sets of teams, but didn't really help today, did it? Pitch is not good at all here. Um, you know, no excuses, but um, we. <laughs> We, uh, we have two teams there that, like you said at the start of the interview, this game won't live long in the memory. As, uh, as the ball, you know, was, I mean, we had a spell in the second half, I think, with about 30 passes, and I said to double, this will be a hell of a goal if this goes in. And, uh, and it was, uh, it wasn't to be. Uh, but those kind of moves were few and far between for both sides, I thought, today. Um, you know, very much a battle. Um, very much what you'd probably expect from, uh, I'm going to Millwall away in, in you know, in, in the cold months, and uh, and yeah, I think it's uh, it's a good point for me. Tough game, a harder point, and it was hard to watch at times as well. But Wickham, one point closer to getting over 23 points, and then onwards to survival. Yes, I'm still on the happy juice. Right, here's what the Millwall fans had to say after the game. Clarkey, HF1. Home game against bottom of the league, and we're on a good run of form. So, of course, Rowett goes for the game plan you'd expect for Man City away. It's an effing joke. Hardly SE16. Why the... Did we play with one lump up front against that shower? Jess. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Matt Smith just cannot start games. He's a super sub. Not He small. can't play a whole game. Only the last 20 minutes, max. Robbo, 555. We couldn't score in an effing brothel that supplied leg clamps and free Viagra. We are the only club in the entire effing world that has strikers that couldn't hit a giant cow's ass with a giant effing banjo. Whiskey Lion. Congratulations, Gary Rowett. An absolute masterclass in how not to set up a team to play against a shit side with the worst away record in the championship who have also conceded the most goals. Utter, total dross. 
James, one, two, five. Whitlam were there for the taking first half, and we put them under constant pressure, but just lacked that final ball. Five at the back was a mistake. They only had that big lump up top, and he was pony. Second half, we played into their hands, and were brought down to their level. I'm still standing. Oh, that was an odd watch. I hate Wickham. They always do it to us. Big Paul. <sighs> At least Ainsworth didn't nick a win. I think I hate him more than anyone else in football. SE 14. It looked like Pierce had clearly fouled Fred in the box, and I expected the ref to give them a pen there. And over Lyon. <sighs> well, that's two hours of my life I'm never going to get back. I wonder when the DVD of the game's going to be on sale in the club shop. Jack Grimmer has certainly proved a hit since joining Wickham Wanderers, a popular figure around Adams Park, both on and off the pitch. Well, our friends north of the border, Red Tinted Glasses, who make a fantastic podcast on Aberdeen, have done an interview with Jack that's over an hour long and is a fantastic listen. We're going to play you a 10-minute excerpt that concentrates on his time at Adams Park. But I do urge you to put Red Tinted Glasses, Jack Grimmer, into YouTube to listen to the full interview. Here we go with the Red Tinted Glasses boys asking Jack what made him sign for Wickham Wanderers. Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of a weird one because it was obviously the next time I found myself out of contract, which is a horrible situation, as you can imagine. <laughs> you just tell yourself that everyone's going to forget about you. Like, it's just it's horrible. And um, I'd kind of I'd met with a few clubs. Um, I'd met with Hibs, actually, as well. And um, and I was so surprised with how Heckenbottom, how how that went down because you know I met with him and he was so impressive and so sort of talking me through clips and you know talking me through this and that and it was it was really really like impressive and I was I thought yeah like if I don't sign for you guys you're going to win the Scottish Cup or something this season like it's just <laughs> that's the way it's going to go and and uh, and I met with a couple of teams in England and I just felt like I just needed the right fit for me personally and like my fiance was based in London at the time and I thought whatever happens I just want to be happy and playing games of football and uh, I remember Gareth Ainsworth rang me and I just had that feeling I played against him a few times and I always kind of got the feeling I was like that's a manager I'd want to play for I just mm-hmm. the whole rock and roller look he just looks like he does him like he just looks an interesting character and I remember when he phones me and I just I, my fiance Sam was making breakfast and I just thought I came through and I was like, That's it. I was like, I think this is it. Like this is gonna be the one. So I went and trained for a week and it happened nicely. It was it was it happened very smoothly. Just signed a deal and that we were all happy with and and played games and God I could have never imagined how that season was gonna go, but that's the fortune and the luck sometimes you get, I think, mm-hmm. when you know, 'cause by no means was it say financially the best package by no means was it the biggest club it it was personally what felt right for me and Mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's what Wickham is I think it's it can't compete with many teams on financial basis or the training ground or the stadium or it's that sort of feel-good family factor and I think it's why players sign for us and um and that's that's I think what inevitably led to us doing so well last season was because we were like a family all fighting for each other and and uh, yeah what a season it turned out to be yeah I'm a big fan of the, the terrace end at Adams Park they're kind of old school ground still holding on, on to that as well yeah they, they, they basically they've they've um, they've talked about sort of doing it up and I think the the, the fans are kind of adamant that it's not happening because I think they like this sort and it is nice it's sort of the old terrace the concrete terrace and you know when it's full and when we score they're all sprinting over each other to get <laughs> down and it, it is it's that proper old school football and and uh, I think when every football clubs are so quick to get the best of everything it's, it's actually a nice sort of mainstay for mm-hmm. us um, shooting into that end in the second half is is uh, they've almost that's probably what we've missed this season is we've not been there to suck the ball in the net you know it's just <laughs> been with no fans it's a, it's a horrible mm-hmm. thing so but yeah no it's nice it's a it's a real sort of family run club uh, as well and 
and it's uh, I feel fortunate actually to play through this period of the club's history for sure. You know, you said it was a special season signing for Wickham last season. Just how good a job has Gareth Ainsworth done with the group of players, obviously um, that you're a part of, and and how did that compare to winning promotion with Coventry? Would you would you say it was a better promotion, or is it hard? Yeah, it hard to say. I, I think uh, I think I remember at Coventry during the promotion season. Every time you won, you were relieved. You were never buzzing. You were just like, oh, okay. That's another one done. Like move on. Whereas Wickham, like we we kind of every every time I'd come home after winning, like, Sam would be like, "One again? Like you're still top of the table?" I'm like, oh, "Yeah, we're not even halfway yet. You know, let's just we'll we'll see what happens." And then you, we got to Christmas and we were seven points clear. And she said she was like, "You keep saying you're not halfway, but you are halfway now, and you're seven points clear." And and it did. It became a point. Unfortunately, I picked up a. I picked up a like a groin injury, which was an, a, an awkward one because it's to do with my pelvis, and um, so I didn't play from November until the playoffs. Mm. And um, so I was actually glad the season got cut short because I was missing out on it <laughs> all that time. But it was it tur- it hit a point that we obviously did sort of we were just kind of ticking along nicely and no pressure. And then it hit a, it hits a point that you think, well, you are halfway. You've been top most of the season. You need to hold on to this, and I think that's a tough pressure to play with. I mean, mm-hmm. um, you know, big teams and big leagues play with that all the time, and it's. And I think you know maybe, maybe the break came for us at quite a nice time. Um, mm-hmm. You know, looking back on the way the form was, and you know we were missing key players going into the next few games, and and I think the pandemic gave us the chance just to reboot and everyone was came back fit and flying and uh, and ready for the playoffs and and I think we were still massive underdogs going into the playoffs and mm-hmm. um the the team talk you said there about the credit that Gareth Ainsworth deserves. I mean the the team talks that he gave us before the first leg of the Fleetwood game and the final like I'll never uh, like Honestly, like they, I wasn't sure if I was ready to cry or run through a brick wall. Like I swear, it was just something I'd never experienced before. Um, you know, he, especially the, the final, he, he sort of switched off the dim the lights and he told us all to just picture. Um, went through our, our captain at the time, who's still our club captain, Matt Bloomfield, had been at the club for 15 years, and he he's Wickham like through and through, five six hundred appearances and. He he told us to all close our eyes and just picture, um, you know, Blooms lifting the trophy and what it would mean to him and what it would mean to his family and what it would. And um, I think Blooms actually got up and went to the toilet, probably shedding a tear after it. That's how that's how deep it got. And um, and I think after that, I think with that image in our heads, we went out and I thought we have to win. Like we have mm-hmm. to win. I don't care if we play horrendous, but we have to win. And. Um, and yeah, someone was smiling down on us that night for sure. And mm-hmm. uh, and it, the, the feeling at full time when you know you've done it is just something I can't describe. And for that reason, I think it is. It's a more, for me personally, it's a more special promotion than Coventry because that was expected. Um, mm-hmm. You had to get promotion. Yeah. No matter how you did it, you had to do it. Whereas with Wickham, it was so out of the blue. It was unbelievable. And it was. A, it's a real fantasy um, story for sure. Yeah, um, definitely. Speaking of sort of Wickham, I can imagine you'll probably be expecting this question to come at some stage. <laughs> Adebayo Akinfenwa. Yeah. <laughs> that man's like a celebrity. He's got like the entire notoriety of like a Premier League player. That must be just crazy being in. I'm going against yeah. him in training as well as like Piezu as well. What's that <laughs> yeah, like? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Uche, Uche as well. Like, I mean, we the other the last game they they both played up front uh, at one stage and I was like how do you mean they're defenders like, <laughs> and uh, but yeah I think it, it, Bale is, is you know people say it all the time oh he's one of a kind he's you know mm-hmm. no one else like him but genuinely as you can imagine there is no one else like him and I think his, his stature yes um, obviously his physique and things but his character is, mm-hmm. is like no one I've ever met he's um you know, larger than life, and is is he's never shy of putting his opinion across on anything and everything which you can imagine. And and having someone in that change room, I think, I think you know, we've, I think it shows this season that he was he had a knee injury through this through the off season, and he'd missed the sort of first, 
eight, eight, ten, eight, seven, eight games, I think. And we lost the first eight, eight or seven games of this season. Mm -hmm. And um, he came back in, and not only did he come back in and sort of play bits, but he was in and around the changing room, mm. in and around the team. And for me, it showed how much work I, I should put into off the field stuff and mm -hmm. who I'm talking to and what I'm saying and how I'm saying it and how you get the best out of people and um you know how people feed off my energy because Christ mm -hmm. like we feed off his energy every day. And um and it is he's 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 someone that I feel very I actually feel very fortunate to have played with. Um, mm -hmm. And even when we played Tottenham, like it was unbelievable. We played Tottenham, and um, the to two Tottenham players, um, Bergwijn and Sanchez, came down to our changing room and asked for his shirt. And so here's <laughs> us, here's us begging to get their shirts, and he had to actually print off more shirts in the club shop to give to the Tottenham <laughs> players. And I thought, and that's what I actually did say to him. I was like, I'm so glad I'm playing with you because. Uh, who else am I going to play with that the Tottenham players are going to, you know, mm. want your shirt over anyone else's? Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it, for me, it, it shows the sort of level he's at, not just on the football pitch, but in, you know, Instagram and social media and that kind of status as a as a footballer. It's, um, I mean, only, even yesterday, only the day after we get beat 7-2, he posts a, a, an ad about old El Paso fajitas, and I, <laughs> and I thought if that was anyone else, I'd be walking into training going, "What are you playing at?" Mm. But because it's him, that's just what he's like, and you know, no one sees anything about it, and rightly so, because I think at his age, he's done enough in the game to get to that level. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't want to argue with him either. Anyway, no. <laughs> to be honest, no, no, I, I, I like no. You just you don't want to go there at all. That's for sure. Because he, he then entices you into try the gym session with him, which is just mm -hmm. miles off it. So <laughs> between him and Ike Pezu, I think we've got the two biggest um, strike partnership probably in, mm. in the whole of world football. I'd imagine. <laughs> yeah. Right, that's it for this week. Many thanks for tuning in again. And also, if you did cast a vote in the FSA Awards for Club Podcast of the Year, and you did vote for us, ringing the blues, thank you very much. Right, thanks to the guys at Red Tinted Glasses. Great podcast that they do up north as well on Aberdeen. We'll be back next week with news of Wickham's home games against Reading and Norwich City. Six points, right? Come on, you blues. <laughs>